Last call for introductions. Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm rising today to highlight Parkinson's Awareness Month and the wonderful work that Parkinson's Society of Canada accomplishes day in and day out. Parkinson's is a neurodegenerative disease occurring when the transmission of dopamine uh, decreases. Signs and symptoms relating to the development of Parkinson's disease can include tremor, slowness and stiffness, impaired balance, rigidity of the muscles, fatigue, soft speech, problems with handwriting, stooped posture, constipation, and sleep disturbances. Diagnosing Parkinson's can take time, and our family doctors are most likely to catch the signs and symptoms early. As there is currently no cure for this disease, one can live with Parkinson's for years before realizing that something is wrong. Those suffering from Parkinson's disease can benefit from certain medications and therapies designed to target areas of discomfort. There are 55,000 Canadians aged 18 or older living with Parkinson's disease. The average air, air age when signs and symptoms of first experience occur is roughly around 64 years old. There is an increasing amount of Canadians, 43%, who do feel embarrassed by their condition. Close to two-thirds of those suffering from Parkinson's also report out-of-pocket expenses associated with the disease. Spouses tend to be the primary caregiver in most causes, placing strain on family relationships. Until a cure is found, I wish continued strength to those fighting this terrible disease and commend the Parkinson's Society of Canada, the healthcare professionals and family members who look after their loved ones with Parkinson's disease and I hope someday we can be here at the Legislature and report that a cure has been found for this terrible disease. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> for the member statements, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. This month, the government announced that it will require all students from grade one to eight uh, to have at least 60 minutes of math instruction a day starting in September. While progress in math is measured by standardized testing, progress in subjects like arts, science, geography, and citizenship are much harder to quantify. Students with exceptional learning and language needs, like those who attend specialized provincial and demonstration schools, must also be recognized and supported. These schools provide students with the opportunity to excel in subjects like reading, writing, and arithmetic. For months, families with children who attend these schools have pleaded with the government to recognize their importance and commit to keeping these schools open. Rather than commit to the long-term viability of these schools, the government capped enrollment, announced consultations, and has now closed enrollment for next year. Speaker, consultations have ended and parents want to know, will this government listen to families and education workers by keeping these schools open, or will they turn their backs on our most vulnerable? Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, you know, uh, we have some very important guests from Comcast and NBC with us today, Rick Smotkin, Brian O'Leary, and Randy Richmond. And because we have these special guests here, I thought I'd take a moment to discuss mm -hmm. film and television production in Ontario. Our government has combined superb talent and state-of-the-art infrastructure with competitive financial incentives. And that supported Ontario's continued success as the number one film and television production centre in Canada and the third largest in North America. And I'm pleased to say that the latest statistics for film and television production in Ontario reinforce this. Earlier this year, the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport announced that 2015 was the best year ever for film and television production in Ontario, Mr. Speaker. And last year, film and television productions supported by the province contributed $1.5 billion to the economy, the fifth consecutive year they fit the billion-dollar mark. And these statistics also show an increase of almost 4,500 jobs over the previous year for a total of 32,500 full-time and spin-off jobs. Mr. Speaker, in Etobicoke Lakeshore, the Global HQ of William F. White and Cinespace Studios also support these jobs and this success. And this steady growth has led to a dynamic television and movie sector. Mr. Speaker, that's money going directly into Ontario's economy money that is helping to build Ontario up. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This week marks National Volunteer Week, a week to celebrate and thank all of our local volunteers. In Perth, Wellington, we are lucky to have many outstanding volunteers whose contributions are invaluable. Last week, I was pleased to recognize some of them at the United Way's Perth Huron Spirit of Community Celebration. 
Thanks to generous community donations and the hard work of our volunteers, the United Way raised a record $1.2 million. Earlier in March, I had the privilege of attending the Volunteer Service Awards in Stratford, along with my colleagues, the MPPs from here in Bruce and Oxford. I presented scrolls to 147 hardworking volunteers. Many organizations across Perth Wellington are hosting special events this week to thank their volunteers. The Here in Perth Healthcare Alliance has over 400 volunteers who provide more than 42,000 hours of service. They are hosting a volunteer lunch to thank them. The Volunteer Centre of Guelph Wellington is, is planning a volunteer garden and hosting a time to give breakfast honouring employer-supported volunteerism. Many of our local municipalities are also presenting special awards of long-serving volunteers. To all of our local volunteers in Perth Wellington, I say thank you. Your time, service and dedication are very much appreciated. This week, I encourage everyone to celebrate our volunteers and consider volunteering for a local organization. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, my constituents, Mr. Pete Leduc, came uh, into our office when he got a notice from Hydro One encouraging him to apply for the Ontario Electricity Support Program, which he did. Like most people in Nickel Belt, he had no idea that Hydro One was offering low-income customer a rebate. He found out when his March Hydro, bill, Hydro One bill came in the mail with a flyer about the program in the bill. It takes six to eight weeks, speakers, for the people to find out if they qualify. That means this program, which started on January 1st, may not be helping my constituents till May or June. I think this isn't fair, Speaker. Mr. Leduc, and I agree, wants his rebate to be retroactive to January 1st, and I think that's right. Not enough was done to make people aware of this program. We did a search of news story related to this rebate. There weren't enough to fill a page, and most related to how complicated the program is and how little uptake there has been from consumers so far. Mr. Speaker, low-income families in Nickel Belt are not scanning Hydro One website to find out discount. They're just too busy trying to make ends meet. I have two questions for the government. Why is a flyer for a program that started in January was in our March Hydro One bill, not before this? And second, will the government do the right thing and backdate this rebate to January 1st for everyone that applies before the end of April? Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm delighted to rise today to speak about the many wonderful community leaders we have in Halton. Mr. Speaker, the Milton, Oakville and Burlington Chambers of Commerce recently held their community award celebrations. I was fortunate to be able to attend the Milton event. It highlighted some of the passionate and hardworking people in our community. The evening showcased Milton's appreciation for our hardworking residents and business people who contribute so much to our community and economy. This year, the Chamber awarded several deserving people awards, recognizing their tireless efforts to build our community up. Some of these remarkable individuals are Brian Penman, Rebecca Hunter, and Denise and Peter Mule. In addition, several important businesses were also recognized, including Pasqualino's, Dean DeFazio with Snap, iDrinkCoffee.com, CF Crozier and Associates, and J. Curry Plumbing. In Burlington and Oakville, other uh, members of the community and businesses uh, included Geotab, uh, Surround, Integrated, El Spiro Family Restaurant, the Oakville Hospital Foundation, and many others. I want to congratulate, Mr. Speaker, all of the award recipients and nominees. You are some of our region's finest, finest, and we are grateful for your tireless efforts, dedication, and vision. Thank you to all of our chambers for organizing these wonderful events. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, well, thank you, Speaker. On April 2nd, I was pleased to attend an event in support of the Vimy Foundation, whose mission is to preserve Canada's first World War legacy. And today I stand with Canadians across our nation to commemorate the 99th anniversary of the victory at Vimy Ridge, where for the first time in history, the four divisions of the Canadian Corps fought together, attacking the French Ridge, and succeeded in capturing it from German, the German Army. Army. In order to ensure that Canada's heroic history is forever memorialized, the Vimy Foundation develops education programs to help youth and Canadians of all ages learn more about the sacrifices made by an entire generation 
when Canada truly came of age, the moment where many historians agree our nation was born. This time next year, Canada will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Vimy Ridge, and the Vimy Foundation is working tirelessly to commemorate that battle. Speaker, the Vimy Foundation believes that the key to a successful future lies in knowing one's past. And to that end, next year, we look forward to their unveiling of a state-of-the-art visitor education centre and Centennial Park located near the Canadian National Vimy Memorial in France. It's always a privilege to recognize our troops, veterans, and their families, and it's my honour to stand here today to recognize those who support them. Thank you to the Vimy Foundation, and I wish you nothing but success in your upcoming centennial celebration. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Stevens, the member from Beaches East Shore. Well, thank you, Speaker. National Volunteer Week is upon us, and today I would like to take the opportunity to recognize a very special volunteer from my riding in Beaches East York. Her name is Olive Dodds, and as I mentioned in the introduction, she's in the East Gallery with some family and friends. Now, the theme of this year's Volunteers Week is the volunteers are the roots of strong communities. And I truly believe that Mrs. Dodds embodies this theme in her regular work at Michael Guerin Hospital. Olive began volunteering at Michael Guerin while it was still named Toronto East General Hospital in 1985. She started when she was 75 years old and is believed to be the Ontario's longest serving hospital volunteer. Now do the math, Speaker. Olive is well past her 100th year. So, over the past 30 years, Olive has contributed to growth in our community through her commitment and dedication to volunteering her time and expertise at MGH. Olive and her group of volunteers have knitted countless numbers of dolls that are sold to raise funds for the hospital and have helped bring smiles to many of our hospital's smallest patients. Mr. Speaker, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Olive Dodds and the thousands of others of volunteers across our province for their commitment and their service to their communities. And I would ask my fellow members to join me in congratulating this exceptional volunteer and all those like her so that selflessly commit themselves to serving our communities. She's a shining example for all of us to follow. Thank you very much. I, I did the math, and yes, you're right, she is very young. The member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. This past Saturday in my community of Waterloo Region, the museum had a special opening of an extraordinary exhibit. Terry Fox, Running to the Heart of Canada, opened in Kitchener. Several Cambridge residents were on hand to hear the opening, including my 12-year-old son, Declan McGarry. David Marsco from the museum introduced a special guest, Daryl Fox, Terry's brother, who spoke passionately and movingly about his experiences of joining his brother on a uh, partway through the run. Daryl talks about often running as well, and, and he kind of jokes some days he, he thought he ran more than Terry because he zigzagged through the, the crowd trying to uh, obtain donations. But he hadn't done it day in and day out as Terry had done, and he was still in awe of his brother. After, after talking about this, he actually answered questions, signed books, and uh, talked about his experiences taking photographs. He said that the Marathon of Hope changed his family's life forever, but then we toured the exhibit. Words cannot express what it was like as we saw the jug of the Atlantic Ocean water that Terry had scooped up in Newfoundland that he intended to dump into the Pacific Ocean at the end. As we know, his journey ended tragically near Thunder Bay, Ontario. His prosthetic leg, his shoes, his shorts, his t-shirts, and his sock full of holes were on display. His journal, his meticulous documentation of, of every mile he ran and how many he had left were there on display. Speaker, he ran a full marathon, 42 kilometres a day, every day. His mental toughness, his dedication to raise awareness and research dollars to the Canadian Cancer Society is an overwhelming inspirational story. And why did he do it? Precise to, precisely to make sure that children that were suffering from cancer had the best possible care in research that they, they could possibly do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. It's now time for